From the newsroom at news.com.au. Hey, I'm Lexi Cartwright. And I'm Andrew Bucklow. And this is the latest from the newsroom. It's Tuesday the 27th of April. All flights from India to Australia could be banned within days in a move that would cause chaos for about 8,000 Aussies still trying to return home from the COVID-ravaged country. India recorded more than 350,000 new cases on Monday, leaving its medical systems overwhelmed and people pleading in the streets for oxygen. Australia's National Security Committee will meet today to discuss temporarily halting all flights out of India. Meanwhile, Australian cricketers currently currently playing in the Indian Premier League, have asked for help. They want the federal government and Cricket Australia to sanction the approval of a charter flight, which could bring all remaining players home together at the end of the tournament. In other news, video has emerged of Prime Minister Scott Morrison telling a national Christian convention he was called to do God's work as Australia's leader. The vision was filmed at the Australian Christian Churches Conference on the Gold Coast last week. In his speech, Mr Morrison also called the misuse of social media the work of the devil and urged other believers to pray against against its corrosive effect on society. Yeah, sure. Yeah, social media has its virtues and its values and enables it to connect with people in ways we've never had before. Terrific. Terrific. But those weapons can also be used by the evil one. And we need to call that out. Overseas now and British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is under fire for a comment he allegedly made last year. Mr Johnson has been accused of saying he would rather see bodies pile high in their thousands than order Britain back into lockdown a third time. Downing Street has strongly denied he ever said such a thing, describing the claims as just another lie. To sports news now and Queensland's bid to host the Olympics has taken a giant leap forward with the federal government offering to pay for half of all the major infrastructure needed. Venues, road and transport projects will be equally funded by the state and federal governments on the condition that they're jointly owned, funded and run by an Olympic infrastructure agency set up with full oversight. Now, while the federal government contributed just $150 million to the Sydney Olympic Games, the new proposed deal would have its share rise into the billions. Alrighty, to showbiz and Anthony Hopkins has given a belated acceptance speech on Instagram after taking out the Oscar for Best Actor yesterday. Now, in a huge upset, Hopkins beat out the late Chadwick Boseman, who was tipped to win the award for Moraney's Black Bottom. Well, here I am in my homeland in Wales, and at 83 years of age, I did not expect to get this award. I really didn't. And um, very grateful to the Academy, and thank you. And I want to pay tribute to Chadwick Boseman, who's taken from us far too early. Meanwhile, the Oscars ceremony was a ratings disaster in the US. Only 9.8 million viewers tuned in, which is a 58% drop from last year. And just finally, there are rumours that there's a new celebrity couple in Australia right now. Yeah, Rita Ora, who was in Sydney for The Voice, is rumoured to be dating Oscar-winning director Taika Waititi, who's in Sydney for the new Thor film. Rumours of the romance intensified after Rita posted a photo on Instagram of Taika hugging her from behind. Good on them. I see it. I like that couple. And just a reminder, if you want the chance to win $1,000, play our daily news quiz at news.com.au forward slash quiz and that cash could be yours. That's it from the newsroom. We'll be back in the afternoon. Your update from news.com.au.